This is the second in a series of short lectures designed to supplement and highlight important events in your reading. You should always take notes. Uh, this second lecture covers the causes of the Russian Revolution and what Russia looked like under its first communist leader. So the question we will answer uh, this afternoon is why there was a communist revolution in Russia. Here are the six causes that many historians point to when they uh, look at the Russian Revolution. The weakness of Tsar Nicholas, the discontent of the peasants, the discontent of the workers, Rasputin, Russian failures in the First World War, opposition groups, and failure of the Duma. We'll review each of these causes. Uh, the discontent of the peasants is the first uh, problem. Uh, Russia was a rural society uh, with over 90 percent of the people being peasants. Until 1861 the peasants had belonged to their masters who could buy and sell them like animals. Uh, when peasants, or really serfs, were freed in 1861 they were given small amounts of land for which they had to pay back the government. As a result most farmers were in absolute poverty. Agriculture was in desperate need of modernization. In contrast, a small number of upper-class people, aristocrats, noble people, owned most of the land. This aristocracy had large townhouses and country events. The creation of two classes in society, those who have and those who have not, will be a source of friction in uh, revolutionary Russia in 1917. Another serious problem during this time is the weakness of the Tsar himself. The ruler of Russia was Tsar Nicholas. He was an absolute monarch, meaning he had total control or total power in Russia. He was a weak man. He used his secrets of police, his police the Okhrana, to persecute opponents books and newspapers were censored. Uh, Nicholas II ruled a vast country that was almost medieval in comparison to other countries. His undemocratic government uh, was a major cause of the revolution. In addition, his wife was a German, so Russians naturally distrusted uh, uh, the Tsar. They were fighting Germans. Uh, here we see, as the revolution starts, portraits of the Tsar, his father and his grandfathers, are ripped from the walls in Petrograd. Uh, the Tsar is the last of the Romanov dynasty. Another problem is uh, Gregory Rasputin. Uh, Rasputin is a monk, uh, so uh, Alexandra, uh, the Tsar's wife, came increasingly under the influence of Rasputin. He was believed to be a holy man and appeared to be able to heal uh, the, Tsar's, uh, hema, the Tsar's son, who was sick with hemophilia. Uh, Prince Alexis was heir to the throne. Uh, Rasputin uh, used his power to win effective control of the Russian government. Uh, this aroused uh, envy. Uh, amongst the people and amongst uh, the aristocracy and he was uh, eventually murdered in 1916. But it is his influence of the royal family uh, uh, undermined the prestige of the uh, Tsar and Tsarina. Uh, here we see a cartoon showing Rasputin with the Tsar and his wife. It sort of shows his influence over the two. Another problem uh, before 1917 uh, were Russian failures in the war. By 1917, Russia had lost almost 9 million soldiers and civilians, compared to 6 million in France and 3 million in Britain. In 1915, uh, we saw that Nicholas assumed personal command of the Russian armed forces. It was a risky policy and any that defeats would be blamed on him. As it turned out, the Tsar was a poor commander. The Russian army lost confidence in the Tsar after a string of serious defeats. The Russian soldiers, poorly trained and equipped, lacking in 
basic items such as rifles and ammunition suffered from lowering morale. Thousands of men deserted. So failures in World War I will uh, be another cause. Uh, here we see industrialization, uh, the discontent of the workers. Uh, industrialism began much later in Russia than it did in Western Europe. Uh, Britain, for example, started uh, industrializing in the 19th century. This happens in the very late 19th century. Huge iron foundries, textile factories, and engineering firms were set up. Most were owned by the government or foreigners and were located in big cities such as St. Petersburg or Moscow. Uh, by 1900, 20 percent of the Russians were workers living in the cities. Working conditions in the new industrial towns were hard, pay was low, and although strikes and demonstrations were illegal, they often uh, took place. Strikers were, in, were frequently shot by the Tsar's soldiers or secret police. Here we see a union leaflet in, 19, in 1898 uh, in which a worker says, the whole day we pour out our blood and sweat, every minute we are exposed to danger. So. Uh, the discontent of the workers, the discontent of the peasants, the poor leadership of the Tsar, the undue influence of Rasputin, all uh, come together to uh, start a revolution. Uh, another uh, factor that will lead to revolution are the creation of opposition groups, revolutionary groups. Two of the most important are the Marxists and the Bolsheviks. The Bolsheviks will be led by Vladimir Lenin. So here are all the causes that we, uh, whoops, I'm sorry, that we reviewed. Uh, the increased con discontent among the public and the army, the Tsar's poor decisions in the war, the growing opposition of the Bolsheviks, the Marxists, among others, the influence of Rasputin. All these uh, began to uh, uh, start uh, the Russian Revolution. There will be two revolutions in 1917. February and October. Uh, the re uh, some historians or some histor history books say the revolutions are March and November. The reason is that the Russian calendar had not yet been reformed in 1917, so it was 13 days behind other countries. That's why we call 8 to 15 March the February Revolution and the Bolshevik takeover of 6 to 8 December the October Revolution. Uh, so, uh, in the February, the biggest event of the February Revolution is the abdication of the Tsar. Abdication means give up. The Tsar gave up his power uh, during the February Revolution, and uh, revolutionaries formed a provisional government. A provisional government is a temporary government. The biggest problem of this temporary or provisional government is that it decided to carry on the war. The burden proved disastrous as it tried to face the threat of the Bolshevik communists who were working through Soviets or workers councils, Soviets or workers councils, to bring down the government. Uh, the second revolution in March or October uh, is when Lenin returns. He had been exiled in Germany. The Germans put him on a sealed train to Moscow hoping that he will uh, uh, destabilize Russia. He promises land, peace, and bread, overthrows the provisional government, uh, starts a civil war between the Bolsheviks and those who oppose them and practices uh, a policy called war communism in which he nationalizes or takes over factories, mines, and railroads. Uh, so uh, he builds a communist state. His goal is a classless society. He creates the USSR, the United Soviet Socialist Republic. He begins an economic policy called the New Economic Policy that tries to get Russia back on its feet. And he creates a secret police designed to uh, inform on anyone who opposes the new communist
state. Uh, so here we see a Bolshevik poster, a propaganda poster, uh, the Ten Commandments of the Proletariat, urging people to live according to communist uh, principle. Finally, we see a Bolshevik poster saying, beat up the noblemen and don't forget the lords. So this is the Russian Revolution in a 10-minute nutshell. We looked at the causes of the revolution and briefly what Russia looked like under uh, Vladimir Lenin. Uh, the next lecture, we'll look at the Treaty of Versailles. Have a good afternoon.